As an Australian Jew, I've been comforted in recent weeks by the concern and support I've been given by the Australian public and by the government and opposition. Adam Bant, are the Greens able to differentiate between terrorism and those fighting terrorism? And will, will the Greens disassociate themselves from the Australian protesters which call for a Palestine to replace Israel rather than to live in peace with Israel? The, the Greens have condemned the actions of Hamas, did that immediately. That is a war crime. The taking of hostages is a war crime and the perpetrators need to be held to account and justice, and they need to be brought to justice. So we are crystal clear. We are crystal clear on that. And uh, whole, upholding the human rights of everyone is critical here. And to ensure that the people of Israel and of Palestine can live in a just peace and security, they have to be treated equally. And everyone is entitled to that. And what we have here, people are asking, how did Gaza come into existence? Well, there has been an occupation of Palestinian territories for a very long time that has pushed them into this open-air prison. We need a peace process so that both Palestinians and Israelis can live in the just peace and security that they're entitled to. So just some clarity on that, and I'd love to come back to you in a moment, but there are some protesters, not, not all, but who seem to want Israel not to exist at all. Well, if we're talking about... If, I don't know if this is what you were referring to, but if you're talking about the, the remarks that, that we heard um, from some at that first protest at the Opera House that was denounced by the organisers as vile anti-Semitism, and I was crystal clear in Parliament. In Australia, we say no to anti-Semitism, no to Islamophobia, but we can also say no to war as well. And so here, Australia can play a role, in, especially in encouraging the United States to say, we don't want to be back here in 10 years' time. Mm -hmm. We need a just and lasting peace. We need Israelis and Palestinians to be able to live together to self-determine their own futures so that they can live in peace and security. Paul... Uh You've heard from Adam Band to denouncement of anti-Semitism and some of the more radical um, or extremist things that you may have heard at these rallies. Does that satisfy you? No, because it, we're not going to be back here in five years. We're going to be back here in months and years if Hamas is not dismantled. Their charter, their sole purpose of existence is to destroy the state of Israel and to kill all Jews in Israel and worldwide. It's openly stated in their charter. And so when you go to rallies and you speak at rallies where people say from the river to the sea, Palestine should be free, the river is the Jordan and the sea is the Mediterranean. That is a call to wipe out Israel. It's on all the Twitter feeds of all the organisers. And by attending and supporting that, you're sending me a message as an Australian Jew that you are political bedfellows with organisations that seek the destruction of Israel. Adam? That's, that's, not my, that's not my position and that's not the Greens' position. What we're saying very, very clearly is that in this area where there has been an occupation of the Palestinian territories for a very long time and it has been routinely... Like, the United Nations has been crystal clear that this is illegal, right, that this cannot continue. What we need... What, what we need, then, is to ensure that both Israelis and also Palestinians are able to live in a just peace and security. That is what the world community should be investing its efforts into, so that both can self-determine their own futures, because at the moment, that is not something that the Palestinians enjoy. OK, that that's, um, slogan, from the river to the sea, uh, Larissa, do you understand why um, some Jewish people find that really offensive? Yeah, I understand that, but I also don't think it... I don't believe that it is hate speech, and I think that in the way that the... I don't agree with that. Uh, I believe that Palestinians have an, a, a, a right to call for freedom. And I don't... I think there is a conflation that happens. And I think we've been talking about a two-state solution for a very long time, and I think that governments have walked away from the negotiation and holding... Like, you can talk about Hamas, but the reality is, is that... Netanyahu, governments need to be held to a higher standard. We need to, them to uphold international law. And so I understand why people say this and people see this as a call to freedom. I understand that you can see this in a different way as well. But at the same time, we need to make sure our governments take actions here. We have to have a ceasefire. You can say you want a ground invasion of Gaza, but where does this end? 
Roger, I want to bring you in um, because what we're seeing in, in our audience, I think, tonight is a, a divide that's really happening in our community about uh, the way that we frame these things and the language that we use and uh, some saying, no, this is anti-Netanyahu, this is not anti-Israeli people, but clearly that's not the way it's heard for many Jews. Yeah. Um, how do you understand it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's... Um... As Risa said, I, I don't think there'd be anybody or many people in the audience that would consider the Netanyahu government to be a very good government. It's not a, not a good government, but the Israeli people have the opportunity at the ballot box to get rid of the Netanyahu government at the next election. Palestinian people have no opportunity to get rid of Hamas in Gaza because there are no elections. Yeah. And so when you talk about holding people to account, there is no holding to account of Hamas. And when we talk about we should have a ceasefire and negotiate, Hamas is not going to negotiate with you. It does not negotiate. Um, and so while that all sounds really good in theory, in practice, the reality is it's not an organisation that you can negotiate mm -hmm. with. It's got 20, um, sorry, more than 200 um, hostages, including foreign nationals, and that was not mm -hmm. an accident. And that's there for a bargaining chip, which they may or may not drip feed, which they will retain so that they can continue... Um, to put off an invasion as long as they... or a ground incursion for as long as they can. And then they will use them in whatever way they want to use them during the period of the ground incursion. And I, I think we also have to understand that as well as the Israeli citizens that were killed on that day. There were 30 French citizens, 30 Thai nationals, 10 Nepalese. Mm. Hamas is not the kind of organisation... It's not a war crime what Hamas did. It's an act of terrorism. Yep. And it's an act of terrorism not only against Israeli citizens, but against citizens from 40 countries mm -hmm. who are killed in it. And I think people have to understand that when they look at the situation. We can, myself included, have great sympathy for the Palestinian um, cause. And I think there has to be a two-state solution. I don't think anybody uh, in their, a rational person there, would, would think... There is there no is other solution. Correct. But Hamas is not part of a two-state two solution. They don't want a two-state solution. And therefore, you can't negotiate with them. So that is unfortunately, the bloody reality of what's going to play out here. And if this discussion is raising any difficulties for you or anyone you know, the numbers of Lifeline and Kids Helpline are on the screen and use them, absolutely. I know it's been a hard conversation.